When we see historic architecture, we might enjoy it, we might appreciate it. What we as preservationists would ask people to think about is the people who built it. Back in the 1850s, there was a, a southern lady who was traveling up the Potomac River and she happened to see George Washington's Mount Vernon house and it was in disrepair by this point. And she was so disappointed and shocked by that that she went back down south and rallied some ladies to save George Washington's home. Because if you, you know, don't save our, our first president's home, really that's just a stain on our country. That was one of the very earliest preservation efforts. The historic preservation movement had focused mainly on national monuments. It was linked very much throughout the 20th century to the preservation of national treasures like the national parks. In the case of Ohio, the homes of our presidents, the very significant earthworks and mounds. In 1963, German Village was recognized as a historic district within the city of Columbus. The German Village Society, the German Village Commission were created and instituted local architectural review. What is remarkable about it is it was a neighborhood of vernacular buildings. It was basically a working class neighborhood. It had the setting with the brick streets and the iron fences and the little yards, but that was not the norm at that time. Normally what communities were preserving were the homes of the rich and famous, their cultural institutions, their major buildings like a courthouse or a state capitol. The preservation effort of the 1960s really emerged as a reaction to urban renewal efforts and transportation and interstate building. There was a lot of damage done to a lot of historic neighborhoods and cities and communities. Vast swaths of American cities were torn down without any thought whatsoever of what was in the way. It really led to the passage of the National Historic Preservation Act. So there were thousands and thousands of buildings that were lost, some significant, some probably not. But there was no way to evaluate what was important, what wasn't important, how do we preserve, how do we move forward without necessarily just wiping out the past. The 1966 National Historic Preservation Act made preservation a national priority and put preservation in the hands of the states. States developed the program in which they would execute the requirements of the federal law. And in Ohio, the natural location for the State Historic Preservation Office was the Ohio Historical Society. Their main thrust was to get out there and identify the historic sites, survey historic properties, list historic properties and sites in the National Register of Historic Places. So it gave local people more control, it gave local officials a way to evaluate what was significant, and it really put the focus on what happens at the local level. With these tools at the national level, but the fact is preservation is local. One of the great losses in the city of Columbus to this day is Union Station. The fact that that building was torn down in 1976, designed by Daniel Burnham, one of the most important architects in American history. Not only did we lose a piece of our history, we actually lost federal funding. And that's a part of the story people don't necessarily know about. The city was applying for money for transportation, for a transportation center at this new convention center. They tore down Union Station, didn't go through the appropriate review process to say, is this a historic building? How can we save it? How could we incorporate it in the design? And they were disqualified for funding, which became a national case. There were editorials in cities well outside of Ohio saying, learn from Columbus, Ohio. We need to respect our historic properties as we move forward in the future. What happened out of Union Station? A couple of things. One is the Columbus Landmarks Foundation was formed and became an advocate for historic preservation in the city. In 1976, that same year, Congress passed the Tax Reform Act that provided some tax incentives, not the incentives that we have available today, but it was the first time there were tax incentives for the rehabilitation of historic properties. And it saved the second Daniel Burnham building in Columbus, the Wyandotte building. That law 
had a direct impact on the preservation of that building. I have no doubt. People believe that listing a property in the National Register means that that property will never be able to be demolished, and that's just not the case. The National Register listing tells a property owner, tells others, that you have a property that is worthy of preservation because of its significance in history and architecture and our culture. You know, one thing that we preservationists don't do is we don't preserve everything just for the sake of preservation. We want to make good decisions. We realize that there needs to be a balance between infrastructure improvement, development, public works, and what we try to help do is to find a balance. So we play a role in helping federal agencies and communities make good decisions and what they should preserve. It's really about property owners or neighborhood associations deciding to band together and say, this is important to us. The longer you can keep saving things and fighting for them and preserving them, the better off you are. I think it reflects that when you drive through German Village in Old Town and King Lincoln and Victorian Village. There's really an active preservation movement in Columbus and what I'm happiest about, it's engaging young professionals, architects, planners, people who want to live in a city that's interesting and dynamic and diverse. I won't be around to watch the next 50 years, but I'm really hoping that the young generation pick up the mantle and they make it theirs and they do it their way and I'm sure it will be for the good of everybody.